temperature on full because that's what I tested it at. With copper backing, I'll get away without burning through. At least that's the theory. Let's find out. That's the other thing with sheet metal. Tap, 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 tap. All the way along. Little taps. If you just run it, you're going to work the hell out of it. It's just going to work that way. So we've got a nice, nice bead along there, good penetration, a couple of blow throughs where it came away from the copper. I have to run at the higher temperature, I get too much of a bulge here. See that? Big bulge, little bulge. This is the weld, that's the temperature. So we're just going to keep on going and you get the idea. Boop, 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 boop. If you don't have the copper backing, you've got to go here, then here, then here, then here, then here, then here. You got to go all over the place. You cannot do what I just did without the copper backing. You will warp your metal. I guarantee it. Joy of joys. I was interrupted due to uh, one of those emergency warnings that came across on my phone. We had a tornado warning yesterday in the middle of the afternoon, actually kind of, yeah, early mid-afternoon, and uh, thought it was prudent to shut production down and put away all the sharp bits and stuff, um, which is why the bicycle and stuff is back in the garage. I usually move it outside when I'm working outside so we've been kind of storming and such for a little bit here that's where we're at and when i run a dry fit it actually <clears throat> still fits you get the idea anyway so the shiny bits look uh Make it look like it's proud. I'm going to actually run this thing through an English wheel loosely just to planish it before I actually attach it. That'll give me a nice curve. And then I'm actually going to use this side to set up a cardboard template for the other there's side. There's one up there that's just a tiny little pinhole I'm gonna fix. So this is the back of, you can see the old rusted fender here. This is off the other side. And I made this on the English wheel. And obviously um, did a little welding too. So what I did is I English wheeled all of this and forgot to turn. Well, didn't forget. Thought I turned record on, but didn't. So anyway, I, I, I rolled this and then I sliced it a few times up here. Bent it in, put it over top of the old fender, banged it into place, um, ground the welds. That's a really rough grind. I'm kind of happy with the grind, but... Uh, and then what happened here on the bottom was I accidentally cut it just a little short. So I had to weld in an extra piece there. So that's, um, it got some color distortion there from the welds. But you know what? It is what it is. It's the lower fender. The metal's the right thickness. I didn't get a video recording of the uh, work I did on the English wheel. I did get some photos uh, during the process. I'm going to share them with you here. Hopefully that's good enough. This is the passenger side uh, lower which you saw me do uh, i've got it dry fitted in you can see it, it it actually turned out pretty well i used that to make a pattern here you can see where i started to roll it i had to do for the sharper bends a couple of uh, cuts you can see here on this one i marked my fender and then i marked the piece i was marking so i could align them correctly as i was checking the bends and there again you can see the part that didn't get is that curled over when they overlapped, I'd cut where they overlapped, and then I was able to butt weld that together and make a proper uh, proper edge. 
Uh, you can see there the welds and the, and the grinding that's been done. I planished it on an English wheel again. With that, you do that with a loose setting. And uh, it turned out pretty well. I'm very happy with this, and I think you will be too. So I've tacked it to the old fender where it you know, fits nice and tight. You can see that. Uh, that's all going to go together and replace this here. The reason I didn't cut this along where that line was was because that would have this I can drill out on the actual spot welds. Plus I have to repair this. Most of those pieces are actually made already. I was able to save this, but I don't know if I'm going to. So this and that bends around. So it looks like I'm gonna to have to make an adjustment there. I have to fill those two holes where it was where I cut it. But so that's gonna go in, and then this piece, which I also need to fill that hole on. Anyway, this is gonna go there. I'm gonna replace just this little bit of this part here that's rusted out. So basically along here, then this. We'll make sure it's all in the right spot. Once that's in, then this will go on. And I'm gonna test fit everything. And uh, basically it's the same as what I'm doing to the other side here. I've got, I've got to obviously degrease them first because that's always the first step is you degrease. And then you, in, in my case, I've got some metal prep, metal etch, POR15 metal etch, um, which puts a zinc coating on it and allows you to weld through it. That'll go on, then the POR15 rust prevention paint. Right up to, but a little bit shy of the seam, so I'm not welding through the paint. And uh, and then once that's in, the back sides of both of the uh, the back sides of both of these are gonna get that's all gonna get POR15, then it's all gonna go on while everything's off. I'm gonna Get in there. I gotta clean that up. There's some sort of undercoating there that keeps lighting on fire when I try to weld it. Um, I'm gonna paint all of this in here while I have access to it with the uh, with that wonderful paint, that epoxy paint I've got. And uh, I, I got some details on that about the temperatures and stuff. I was worried because we're getting into September here, and um, I was worried about uh, epoxy setting at temperatures and. I got a lot of great information from them uh, as to what temperatures they've tested to, uh, what how it's going to react, and uh, I'm going to keep it within the parameters of what they specify and what they've tested to because it's epoxy and it's all epoxies are fussy, and I want to I want to do this right and uh, and I think this is a good paint and I think it deserves a fair shot so we're going to see how we go here. We'll talk to you soon. Uh, I've spent the last couple of days doing some stuff, um, didn't get videotaped, uh, and the reason is, is it was pretty simple stuff that, you know, I, I took, um, I took a heat gun and a scraper and I started pulling off all of the old undercoating that was in here. And the reason I did that, and I, I, I still got obviously some to finish up. I'm gonna hit it with some, uh, some mineral spirits to dissolve the last bit. I took the thick part off with the scraper and the heat gun. The heat gun works really well, but you can't get in all the little nooks and crannies and can't get 100% off to degrease it. I'm gonna use either mineral spirits, turpentine. I'll, I'll work my way up. Um, hopefully I don't get an aircraft stripper, but I'm thinking it's gonna be, I'm thinking Turpentine or mineral spirit should do the job just fine to get the last remnants off. Shiny metal because in order to put POR15 on, which this whole area in here is going to be done with POR15, you have to do the POR metal prep on the shiny metal. You can put the POR15 over the rusty stuff, but anywhere I put new metal, obviously I needed the um needed the treatment and it's like an acid etch uh, and what it does is it etches the metal so that the POR15 has a tooth. It also puts a zinc 
coating on which um, allows you to weld through it. There's no, uh, it remains conductive, it remains conductive. So you can actually, um, through the metal prep, I can do the spot welds. I had built this, and you can see the, the remnants of the stuff that didn't, I mean I rinsed it, but you can see the remnants of it. Uh, that'll come off with the, the next degrease. So yeah, this was the, the inner. It's gonna go, oops, goes that way. That I made. And then I also, I made myself a patch panel here on the English wheel. The white again is just the, uh, the running of the, uh, the etch. I thought I had rinsed it all um, and then overnight the white. It's almost like efflorescence but on metal kind of surfaced. Along with that little bit of flash rust there, I'm going to take that off. Because the metal prep needs to be rinsed thoroughly with water. So this part did not get metal prepped. So when the water hit it, when I was rinsing that, obviously I got a little bit of flash rust. That will come off real easy. And uh, I still want to fix that dent along um, there anyway. I filled, there was a bunch of holes drilled all over the place. Boom, 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 boom. Where, um, where they anchored the filler. And uh, those got those got filled in with weld. Got to drill two more license plate holes here and here. Uh, and I'm gonna weld some nuts to the back while I've got the floor out. See, floor, no floor. So I can get in there, it's easy. And that way when I go to put a license plate on, I just have to screw through. So that's gonna happen. Um, by the way, this here is the metal prep that I used. And it's not cheap. This little thing cost like 35 or 38 bucks or whatever it was. But uh, the alternative is having my paint not stick. So yeah, I don't know if I showed you this on this inner that I built. I did this on both sides. This drain hole, which I added. And then on the inside, I put a little uh, funnel protector, whatever. And the reason I did that is I thought there should be a drain hole in here. I mean, that's why this area rusts so badly in this, this whole thing. Every, they all rust because water gets stuck in there. So I put in a drain hole, but then to keep stuff from being driven in there by the rear wheels, I put a little protector on there so that stuff can't get driven directly into the cavity. Once this is on, it's all going to be POR15. I'm also going to drop some... Uh, some uh, um, wax oil in there every great while. Well, probably not every great while, probably every while. I'm gonna POR 15 this whole area in here on the back side. Just, you know what? I've got it apart. I may as well take advantage of it. I'm gonna come up over the top as much as I can with the POR 15. This side's pretty good. There's no, this is all solid along here. The other side, uh, drawn out. There's going to be a chunk of metal replaced on this side. Um, and this area, of course, here has got to come out temporarily anyways when I replace the sill panels. So I'll deal with that then. Onward. First coat of POR15 is on. Wear gloves, wear a mask, it stinks. But uh, it gets two coats, so there's the first one. Got inside and out. And a couple of drips on the floor, obviously, but nothing too terrible. But yeah, we got her, got her looking black there. It's a thin coat. Some of it ran a little there. Uh, I put it on with a brush. It's supposed to be a thin coat. Uh, did the insides of these as well. So 